Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 303. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how the super rich keep their wealth. And you're going to learn the assets that the uber wealthy have their money invested in. This episode is sponsored by Audible. It's the way I read more books and stay ahead of the curve. Audible is, of course, the easiest way to read books because all you have to do is just listen, like you are right now. There's over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, and your first audiobook is free. Just visit audibletrial.com forward slash be wealthy and smart. That's audibletrial.com forward slash be wealthy and smart. Well, recently I found an article on the Washington Examiner that talked about how the super rich keep their wealth. It's by Joseph Lawler, and I found it very, very interesting. I will post a link in the show notes and also on my website so you can see the actual pie chart of assets that the wealthy own. But I wanted to read this article and share it with you and just have you see how the wealthy have their ownership of assets, maybe a little bit differently than the average person, but I think it's going to make total sense why that is. So here's the article. Newly released statistics from the IRS show the makeup of the fortunes of the very wealthy. For individuals with a net worth of at least $50 million, stocks and other business ownership interests make up the bulk of their wealth. State and local bonds, hedge funds, and private equity and cash also make up significant chunks of rich people's assets. And then we have the pie chart, and we've got a lot of different things that they own, many, many things, over 20 different types of assets that they own, but the biggest percentage is publicly traded stock, and that's 21.87%, followed by closely held stock, which would be ownership in their own business, which is 17.86%, and then non-corporate business assets of 11.1%, cash of 6.58%, and from there, the percentages get smaller and smaller and smaller for their assets. The article goes on to say, the IRS data released Tuesday is based on estate tax filings generalized to the broader population. Released once every three years, the statistics allow a look at major fortunes that isn't available elsewhere. The biggest difference between the very rich and the average family is that their homes count for an almost negligible amount of their overall wealth. For people with net worth over $50 million, personal residences account for just over 2% of their wealth, less than art at 3%. In contrast, a house accounts for more than two-thirds of the wealth of the median household, according to the census's survey of income and program participation. The comparison, however, is a bit of an apples-to-oranges one in that the IRS data isn't broken out by the median high net worth individual. Instead, it simply describes the total wealth for the group. Fewer than 7,000 of the 14,000-plus people with more than $50 million have wealth in the form of art. So super interesting article. I think the main point is that most people who aren't super wealthy have a big percentage of their wealth in their home, which is why I am a proponent of most people owning their home and buying real estate as soon as they can buy their own home. That's a great idea. And it also shows that the uber wealthy diversify their assets very broadly. As soon as you have wealth, you want to be diversifying more to protect your wealth. So that makes total sense. That's step six of the six steps to wealth. You're going to own stock in your own business, most likely. You're going to own publicly traded companies. 
and own these stocks that are on the stock market because you're going to want to grow your wealth there. So it's the money engines that we've talked about. It's investing like billionaires and having a luxury brand business. And this is exactly how the very wealthy are also invested in the vast majority of their assets. So it's a very interesting article. I'm going to leave a link on my website and in the show notes. And I encourage you to take a look at this pie chart. You'll see lots of different colors and lots of different assets that they have diversified themselves into. And I think it's a very, very good exercise to see what the very wealthy invest in. Hey, have you heard I'm having a summer sizzle giveaway? Until the end of September, you could win six awesome prizes, five of the Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio courses where you learn how millionaires think the right thoughts for wealth, and those are valued at $197 each, or one of my Wealth Journal books, which is a Wealth Journal and mini course where you learn the six steps to wealth, and I share those steps that help me become a millionaire, and it's valued at $67. Here's all you need to do. Just leave a review for Be Wealthy and Smart on iTunes. If you have an iPhone or on stitcherradio.com, if you have an Android, like my Facebook fan page at Linda P. Jones fan page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Linda P. Jones. Then send me an email and let me know you did it. And my email address is lpjhome at gmail.com, lpjhome at gmail.com. And if you want to get your net worth growing faster, get my 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. There are 11 quick things you can do to get your net worth growing faster. It's at my website, lindapjones.com. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.